In Tableau 2020.2, Tableau have added the capability to do incremental data refreshes inside of Tableau Prep. Now, the other benefit here is that you can also append data to data sources using the same capability. So let's take a look and see how that works. I've got two files here. I've got this sample superstore file, which is essentially the full um, file that we get when you install Tableau. It's essentially the sample data that comes with Tableau desktop. Then I've got a slightly smaller file here, which only contains the first two years of data. So 2016 till the end of 2017. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to first connect to this smaller file. And then we're going to do an incremental refresh to see how it handles the additional data. And I'm just basically going to update this file by overwriting it. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect to this file in Excel. You'll see here that it opens up the folder that I was, I was in already. So I've already got this uh, pointed to that. And we'll go ahead and open it. And as we connect to this file in Excel, you'll see that we get a list of tables. Uh, we're actually getting a bit of uh, duplication here. This is because the table uh, and the named ranges are essentially the same. So there's a table and a name range that are basically highlighting the same thing. So we're just going to take the table, the raw data that's inside of the Excel file. And you can see here the different fields. Now, the incremental refresh setting is actually in here. It's in the input setting. And in order to get this to work properly, we're going to need a few things to set up. If I just zoom in here and hit enable, you'll see that I have another option that turns up when I tick that box. And I can identify new rows using a particular field. Now, because I'm looking at orders, every time an order is made, the order date is updated. So each order has a new order date. You can never sort of go back and change the order date on a particular order. So that's going to be the field that I use to identify new rows of data in my data set. And you can see here that it wants an output. And when I select that drop down, I have no output. And that's because I simply haven't built out the workflow yet. So you're always going to want to make sure that in order to set up an incremental refresh, you build out the workflow. I'm just going to do a very basic build here. I'm just going to add one clean step in. Okay. It's going to give me an alert because I haven't actually uh, sorted this setting out. So I'm going to untick that so that we can get rid of that uh, notification click on the step just after you'll see that alert disappears and you can see here that I've got two years worth of data okay 2016 to 2017 and then 2017 to the very beginning of 2018 um, in the in the data set so now that we've got this I'm just going to create an output a very simple output uh, I might I'm not even fussed where this goes to be honest I just need the output to exist so that I can finish setting up the incremental refresh I'm now going to go back into my input go back to settings enable the incremental refresh. And now you can see I can select an output. And so this output name here, it's really important to make sure you name these correctly because this is what will come through over here. So I'm gonna select that output and you're gonna see that this is gonna ask me for which field in the output it should be monitoring to see uh, updated data. And so you notice that Tableau here has not just chosen any two fields, it's chosen the two fields that, most, that are most similar to the order date, i.e. a date field. So it's either the ship date or the order date. And so I wanna make sure these two marry up. It might be that you're working in uh, two different databases and actually you have incremental data that comes in on one side, but you need to actually use a different column in another data set. And so that's a potential use case for having different sort of named fields in this particular case, okay? So now that's all set up. If we go over to the output, you see that we have a few new options here. So you can see here that you have the ability to do a full refresh. And when you do that, you actually get the ability to add what happens when that runs. So you can actually say that when you do a full refresh, it should only add data. This is useful, for example, where you want a data set to grow larger every single time you run the workflow, maybe because you're updating historical records and all you're doing is appending information to the data set or you may be trying to get a different shape to your data and you're trying to use that in some other analytical purpose. But I'll, I'll just keep these as their default. So a full ref refresh will refresh the whole data and an incremental refresh will add data. That's sort of the most logical way of doing this. You can swap those two around, as I said, for then that particular use case. Um, and then you'll also see a small change here in the run flow button. When I click on that drop down, you'll see here that a full refresh, um, you get the full description of what's going on here. Uh, for both full refreshes and incremental refreshes. So let me zoom back out. We're actually going to have a go at simply just running this workflow. We've never run the workflow, so it's just going to save this out to uh, the default location. Unfortunately, in this version, it's decided to crash. Let me try and fix that. If we go to the alerts, you'll see here that it's actually giving me a good reason. 
I'm essentially trying to write to the same file that I'm reading from. So I actually need to give this a slightly different um, sort of location. So let's let's go ahead and maybe just save this in a different location. Let's go away to my uh, desktop if I can find it. Here we go. Let's go over here to this folder. This will do. I'll call this output update dot hyper. Click accept uh, and click accept again on that. And now this is all up to date. I should be able to run this flow successfully. So let's have another go at running it. And you can see that successfully run this time around. Okay. So if I take a look at my data set, you can see that everything is in there. Again, we've only got these two order dates. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the files over. I'm going to simply take the data that is in this file. So this is the new file. I'm actually going to copy it. Um, I'm, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit hold alt and I'm going to drop it into that table and it's going to ask me if what I want to do. I want to replace the file that's in there. And now that's up to date. You can see the file size has changed here. Okay. And so now if I was to click on this again and then come through, you'll notice what it's actually doing in the background is it's only running additional rows. Let me just uh, refresh this connection to make sure it's pulling in uh, a non-cached version of that data set. And then we can see this update in front of us. There you go. So now you can see it's pulling in the full data set. But the difference here is when we actually run this output, if we run this and do an incremental refresh, it's only going to run the flow for the new additional rows that have actually come through our data. So if you're doing any sort of calculation or anything else, those are not going to be redone for data that had already been through the workflow, if that makes sense. Okay, and this is this is fundamental because if you've got a really large data set, let's say you're working with um, a multi-billion row data set, um, you're not going to want to run all your calculations and computations again on data that has already been run through this process, especially if it doesn't change. Okay, let's say I'm calculating the the, the date, the difference between the order date and the ship date. You can see here. Once this is calculating an order, why would I want to run that twice? And so the incremental refresh is extremely useful in this particular case. Okay, You also get the ability to run them here. So you can see that in this small drop down, I get the ability to do an incremental refresh there as well. So I can just hit the incremental, incremental refresh. What it's actually doing is it's adding data to the data set. And you notice this was much faster this time. Okay, It just, just ran the data right through. Okay, And so now I have all my data available to me. Um, in um, and, and so now you see I have all my data available to me in the extract. This is particularly useful if you're running Tableau Prep Conductor on the Tableau server or Tableau Online. Essentially, this allows you to run uh, sort of data prep on incremental additions to databases that you might be working with. So let's say, again, you're looking at orders. You don't need to run this process every single time on old orders. Otherwise, your, your process is going to just keep taking longer and longer and longer as you build more years of history into your data set. That's pretty much the feature in a nutshell. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, hit like, hit subscribe. If there's any question you'd like answered, drop them in the comments. I'm pretty responsive on comments. Uh, and if there's something that you don't see in this channel or you'd like to see more of, uh, drop a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see. And I'll catch you in the next video.